Congratulations. Thank you. Best Actress Award. Thank you. New York Film Critics. Yeah. When you hear Best Actress, Lady Gaga, what goes through your head? It's super emotional, and I could not believe that I won uh, the New York Film Critics Best Actress Award. I was, I was so uh, honored. I feel really grateful. I think maybe because I'm from New York and because I went to the Lee Strasberg Institute to study acting and I went to Circle in the Square, uh, the, the conservatory, I, I just, I don't know that I always get to still talk about what it's like for dreams to come true. I, I'm 35 now, you know, the, and I, I still feel like my dreams are coming true. And I wish to just like say, you know, you know I was listening when we were talking off camera about, you know, your start in entertainment, but I know that you know that it, it actually is true. If you work hard and you believe in yourself, you can make anything happen. And the dreams never stop. That's, that's, I mean, at least for me, I pinch myself every day I get to do what I do. Yeah. I go on a red carpet, you know, you've seen me on a gazillion red carpets. I'm on a red carpet, I'm pinching myself, and I'm like, how did I get here? I deserve to be here, which is a hard thing to say to oneself. Yes. How often do you say that to, to yourself? Like, I deserve this. You know, I think I always end up saying I deserve this meaning I deserve to be here because I work really hard and I do the work and I study and I I do my homework. I am very close with my director. Uh, I'm very close with all the artists that I work with, the actors, musicians, producers. And I think that you can know that you are deserving of something when you put the time in. Uh, otherwise, I don't know that anyone deserves anything. And you know, we, in a lot of ways, we're privileged or we're blessed to have what we have. Uh, but in the art world, you have to you have to do your work for it to, for it to be deserving. And, and I truly believe that. I, I don't, I don't think I could ever feel like I deserve anything that was just handed to me. Take me back to those days studying New York. Tell me about one of your first auditions you went on that you will never forget. You know, I uh, I, I did a, it was like a Lens Crafters commercial mm -hmm. inter, uh, audition. And I, I was a very um, emotional child and I was very depressed. And I think that being in a room with cameras and lights like we are right now was something that was so foreign to me that even though I had studied acting, I studied, you know, in a theater. Uh, so, I, and I didn't take film and television classes, I took theater classes. So once I was in auditions and there was cameras and there was lights, I, I really froze in, in almost some type of traumatic way where I couldn't remember my lines, I couldn't remember what actions I was supposed to do. And, and this, I remember now I was supposed to, say something about how I was having trouble seeing and then uh, put my glasses on and then have them fall off my face uh, in sort, as a sort of a, a nerdy reflex. Mm -hmm. And I, I just, I couldn't do it and I couldn't do it because I was too nervous. And someone said something to me during the audition and they said, you know, the glasses are supposed to fall off at that part and then I tried it again but I did it in the wrong spot and like literally nothing went together. And I think it just took me some time to really understand that when you're acting and when you're working, you are in control of what happens and that there's so, so much about it is not performing. So much about it is listening and being present. You studied theater. When are we gonna see you on Broadway? I don't know, maybe when I write my first musical. Is that what it would take? I just think that um, there's so many amazing musicals, but I, I love writing music and I love musical theater and I know a lot about musical theater and I know a lot about music. So <laughs> I, I think I would really enjoy the process of creating a musical and I've thought about it for a really long time. Um, probably mostly because I admire Elton so much and uh, I admire The Lion King so much. Uh, and I view that as a musical that he wrote um, and and also, I think that an acting teacher many years ago said something to me about, uh, about singing, uh, meaning in theater. And mm -hmm. I, I thought it was really fascinating. Uh, 
I asked them what the difference was between singing a song in life and singing a song in theater, and what the difference was between theater and musical theater. And I thought they had this great answer, and the answer was, in musical theater, the, the actors and the characters sing because what they're saying to each other could, can simply not be said unless they burst into song. Mm -hmm. that, that you can't convey what you're trying to say unless there's music. And I thought that that was such a beautiful way of describing it. And I thought, what if I wrote essentially a play where throughout the play, everyone broke out into song because they had to because they, they couldn't say what they were trying to say unless there was music. And that's you as a singer, though. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's my life. Is, right, I was just yeah. going to say, you're describing your success. Yeah, that's my life. What I, other, the life is music for me. What, what are your other favorite musicals? Oh, my gosh. I love Godspell. Mm. Mm. I love, um, like, all of Stephen Sondheim's musicals. Um, I love Guys and Dolls. Uh, I love Frank Lesser's work. Um, I could go on and on. Um, <laughs> I'm, listen, I'm a New York gay Jew. Yeah. I could go on and on about Broadway musicals. Yeah, and I just recently <laughs> saw Tick, Tick, Boom, uh, which, you know, I, I already, I, I mean, it, amazing. <laughs> and, it, you know, I'm so excited for West Side Story. It's just so exciting. It's it's just, it's, 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 it's beautiful, and I, 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 and I have to say that I really, truly feel honored to be in the company of all these great films and all these amazing <laughs> actors and 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 cinema and and this is this is just the beginning, and I'm excited to continue to do the work. You know, that I feel blessed that I get to. So let's talk about the film. It's dark. You stayed in character. How do you not take that darkness? home with you after work? Well, you know, unfortunately, Mark, I do. Yeah, yeah I do. And I, I have a really hard time with that. And I've actually recently gotten to talk with some other actors that uh, don't do that. And I have gotten excited about learning how to be more nimble in that way. But uh, I think also because it was a red zone in Italy, uh, going from set to uh, your hotel room and already just choosing not to break character and then also not having you know contact with the outside world, it kind of, it, it, it's sort of set up for you to, to stay in it. Right. Uh, but I, it, for what it's worth, I was the same way for A Star Is Born. I was always Ali. And um, for this, I was always Patrizia. I always spoke in my accent, I, and I and even if I was speaking about things that weren't related to the movie, like I wasn't mm. pretending that right. you know Maurizio was waiting for me downstairs. <laughs> you know, I was still I was still like living my life. I just right. I lived it as her, and it. I brought the darkness with me home because her life was dark, and not not all of it, you know. So there would be different days. If I if I if I shot scenes all day where she was younger, I wouldn't bring as much darkness home. But when I shot scenes, you know, like the the scene with uh, Jack Houston at the school um, with Domenico del Sole, you know, like that that was hugely traumatizing for her and so hugely traumatizing for me, and I took it home. Uh, but I, I will say one of the most beautiful experiences I had with the darkest scene that I, I shot with uh, Ridley was the scene where she's like holding herself down in the bathtub. Mm -hmm. uh, and I remember that I, I stayed down there as long as I could, and when I came up for air, I remember thinking to myself, I wanna live. And in the scene, she's asking herself, "Do like I do, if she wants to or not?" And she, and she's 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 trying to kill herself, mm -hmm. um, but it's shot in this really beautiful way where you kind of don't know exactly what's happening. But I knew, like, my intention as the actress was for her to ask herself that question mm -hmm. when she went under. But when I came up, I said, "I want to live." So the, I do, so I guess there's a duality that I'm right. trying to express to you that there's this darkness that you might take home with you. And also you might have a beautiful self-discovery on set that no matter how dark life gets, you just know that you want to live life. Do you call your therapist on a day after like that when you're in your hotel room going, I need to talk to someone? Because exactly what you're saying, you're in a red zone. 
you're, you know, not quarant well, you're quarantining because you're just going back to a hotel room. You're probably not surrounded by as many people as you usually are. What do you do when you're with yourself? Uh, well, if I'm being honest, I had uh, I had a psychiatric nurse with me uh, towards the end of filming, so I yeah. I, I did I did call uh, uh, people that I work with um, for a period of time, and then I needed someone on set, and I'm really grateful that they were there. Who came up with that idea? I sort of felt like I had to. I, I felt that it was safer for me, and uh, and I you know. I really wish to not glorify that in any no, way. No, of course, um, yeah. And I, I don't think that like any actor should push themselves to that limit. Uh, and I ask myself all the time why I do that. Uh, I've done some pretty extreme art pieces throughout my career. Uh, I, the things I've put my body through, my mind through. And I can feel like this, like it's like a walnut of sadness in my stomach as I say this to you. I don't know why I'm like that, Mark. I really... I think that the best answer I could give you is that I have a sort of romantic relationship with um, suffering for your art that I developed as a young girl, and uh, it, I, it just sometimes goes too far. And when it, and when it does go too far, it, it can be hard to reel it in on your own. Yeah. And I, I think it's okay to ask for help. So. Uh, the, if I'm living true to my values, I would say yes, that's the truth of my experience, and also. If you're feeling like that, ask for help. You know, no, no matter what, whether you're on a movie set or you're in school. When you look at your project, next projects, I mean, there's been nothing announced. But do you say, you know what, I got to be careful next time, or I don't want to do that again, or you get a performance that is so authentic and so raw? Do you feel like, you know what, I'm gonna have to go there. That that's the way. That's my art. I'm not sure yet. I mean, my goal would be able to go there and drop it faster. Um, it's not a secret that I'll do anything for art. I think I probably will completely change this when I have a child. Hmm. But I don't have a child yet. Um, Why do you say that? I want to uh, be available and present for my children in a way that I think when you are acting in that way, uh, it could be problematic for for a child to be around. And so I think I'd want to really protect my kids. I, I think, I, what I guess what I'm trying to say is I, I often say this to myself and it doesn't work, but I often ask myself to protect my, my inner child while I'm working so that um, I am not harmful to myself. So I actually have to imagine that I have a child in order to consider <laughs> right. be, being a healthier artist. Uh, but I believe it's possible. And I, and I, but, but yeah, I mean, one of the greatest performances I think I ever gave, most people haven't even seen, but it was in the Louvre. And it was a Robert Wilson uh, uh, work that we did together. And I hung upside down for 45 minutes in bondage. And we, uh, it was in honor of Alexander McQueen. And uh, it was done on Halloween. And you know it was, it, <laughs> and at midnight too, and it's skull. Exactly. I mean, right. like, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, it was, it was, it was, it was serious, and it was real, and I really went there. And also, I don't encourage anyone to do that. And also, that's kind of, that's part of my existential crisis as an artist is that I felt compelled to do it and to walk into the Louvre and see yourself not as a painting, which is how we did the other work. Like I, I, I posed as the death of Marat for Robert Wilson. Also, um, but to see yourself, uh, it's such a, it, it's an achievement as an artist that I think that very, very few people in, in their lifetime ever get to experience to be in the Louvre. And also it comes at a huge price. And, and there are some, art, there are some things I haven't done. Uh, I have to, um, uh, you know, you know, Klaus. Uh, uh, he, he's been an art curator for so many years, and is a dear friend of mine. Like, I remember him telling me, like, about some performance art piece that I wanted to do. He just said, like, you can't do that, and uh, it, it was in an effort to protect me. And he, you know, was so close with Marina Abramovich, and you know. So I think that there's a balance, right? It's like I think I'm I'm becoming more and more aware of myself, but I do think I was able to give a really authentic performance because I committed to it, and 
uh, but I think commitment can come in many different forms, and I, I really wish not to glorify it because I, I wish for people to you know be safe and to care about their mental health. So when are you going to do a rom com? <laughs> <laughs> Are we doing one right now? <laughs> um, a romantic comic. You know what? As soon as we finished this movie, uh, my manager Bobby was like, "So, romantic comedy." Uh, you know what? It, for what it's worth, House of Gucci is still really funny, and so and the, <laughs> and, you're pushing it. Um, but, but there's there's some moments that are funny, yes. and uh, yeah, I mean. Uh, Funny for us, for, for this crazy family. Um, uh, I'd love to do a romantic comedy. I, I just, I, I want a, obviously, a great script, great director, right. something that I believe in. Um, but this was really special, this project. And I, I, I can't say enough about Ridley Scott. He's such an amazing director. You know, Jared was saying this today, um, and it's really true. He's really an actor's director, and mm -hmm. it's because you know that when you're doing a scene, you don't have to even think about it. You're being captured while the other actor is being captured. It's all around you. So you're not waiting your turn. You're not, in, and, and even when that's happening, you know, I always, on American Horror Story, no matter what, I was fully in. If the camera wasn't on me, I, was, I wanted to give my fellow actor absolutely everything, but it, it's, it was an incredible experience, and I got to work with Jeremy Irons and and Al Pacino and and Adam Driver and Salma Hayek, <laughs> and it, I mean it was it was amazing. And I think when you have reverence for what you're doing and you feel mm -hmm. grateful, you do the work and you get to make something special. And and I and I'm so happy people want to go see it and that they're still going. I mean that's what it's all about, right? It's like yep. getting people to like rally and. Um, to celebrate cinema, to celebrate art, and for me, it's about building community. And I think after, you know, and we're still in COVID very much, but, you know, rebuilding community is, is so important mm. when we've been so separated. Would you ever do a superhero movie? A superhero movie? Uh, I might, yeah. I, I, it's really hard for me to say that I like wouldn't do something. Right. I, I think mostly I'm not interested in doing things that don't ultimately have something meaningful to say. Mm -hmm. And I did House of Gucci because I thought that Patrizia Reggiani as a character had mm -hmm. something to say and that there was something in the script that was really valuable for women. And I care about women. When does your team know to show you a script that they've read? Because I'm sure they just come nonstop. You can't read them all. You have to have people filter through them. How do they know when, you know what, this is one you should read? You know, I have a really strong artistic collective around me. And while I have amazing, you know, agents and an amazing manager, I can also say about my amazing agents and amazing manager that they're also my friends. Mm -hmm. And so I would describe it sort of as a meeting of the minds and mm -hmm. that there's scripts and conversations and uh, directors talking to people that I love and then me talking to them and it's just sort of this organic process and then somebody eventually goes, I think you might like this one and I go, okay, and I take it and then I read it and then I might meet with the director and talk about it and I'm very much a, uh, an artist artist I can meet with a director about a movie that they may or may not want me in or that I'm not maybe even sure about yet and I, I'm really just excited to You're talk okay about it. it. Yeah. yeah, I mean I, I'm really excited to just engage in conversation about uh, about art and what somebody's trying to say, what I'm interested in saying and uh, meeting Ridley, you know, what was so awesome was I was already excited about the movie and then he said she really loved him. And when he said that, I knew he was going to make a movie that was about much more than a woman that snapped over money. And that's not what happened. And you've seen the film. Yeah, and she loved them. She, and we've, listen, not everyone goes to the extreme that she went to, obviously. No. But we've all been in that place where you love and it hurts, but you still want to be around that person or you yeah. still think for some reason, it could work when everything, everything around you is telling you it's not working. I think that that's what made 
her story different was, yeah. and what I found fascinating was that the line was thin between like her humanity and any other woman's humanity, meaning any other woman might have felt like her and she, but she committed a murder. And that I didn't want there to be that big of a difference between her and any other woman because I don't believe there was that big of a difference. I just think she did it and most women don't. And we can't be surprised that the family's not happy with it. They don't want to see this trauma. Of course not. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I can't, I can't, I can't even imagine how painful this must be. And it's why I tried to put something important into mm -hmm. the role. And I also believe it to be the truth. So for what it's worth, um, I care about people and I would never have been a part of a real story about someone that was just a terrible person. Um, does does it add to that intensity, you know, like we said about going dark, knowing that it was a real person? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I wondered all the time when I was in Italy if she was going to show up. I mean, she's out of jail. I mean, right. there's there was like a safety element. Um, I don't trust her. I don't think she's a good person. Um, but I had to love her to play her, and I had to discover her as a child. And when you di when you discover the child and somebody that becomes a monster, it's complicated mm -hmm. because how could you not love a child that has done nothing wrong? Meaning she didn't kill Maurizio when she was, you know, 23. And, and I believe now that, I believe she's somewhere living with deep, deep regret. And I, I don't think I played her in the way she would have wanted me to. And that's okay. Was there a scene that didn't make it in the final cut that you wished did? Uh, yeah. There was. What was that scene? In real life, Patrizia had a brain tumor, mm -hmm. and it was rumored that Maurizio never went to visit her and that the family didn't uh, go visit her. So she was alone. And uh, so it just, for me, was sort of more, it provided more color and motive behind why the murder happened. Um, but for what it's worth, I think it says a lot about Ridley as a director that he didn't need that scene to be in there for you to understand why this happened. Uh, meaning, I think that he he allowed the uh, the horror of systemic patriarchy to be something that could live on its own without that piece. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, but yeah, that scene. Did you did you shoot the scene or it oh, just yeah. Uh, wow. yeah. Lady Gaga, this is great. God, I could keep going on and on. I know. I mean, well, wonderful. we always have a nice time we when we talk to each we other. We really do.